Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jason and today in this video we're going to be talking about going from the military to the military and contracting world, also known as a PMC, a private military contractor, right? You guys are in the military and you're thinking about getting out and you don't have any clue or idea what you want to do with your life, becoming a military contractor could be that thing, right? It's, it's the best of both worlds. You can, you're a civilian working for a corporation that's working for the DOD, the DOS. So you are in a military environment and you have weapons, you have gear and equipment on. And so it's, it's, it's a great first step in your process of getting out of the military into the civilian world. Now we're gonna cover three categories. We're gonna cover the process of joining a corporation and becoming a military contractor. We're going to talk about the benefits, and then we're going to talk about the important documentation and IDs and stuff that you need in order to become a contractor. Now, to be clear, the contracting world consists of many different jobs, aircraft mechanics, engineers, computer specialists, cyber specialists, uh, physical security personnel, um, and the list goes on and on. So it's not just... You know, a guy with a gun shooting people and um, with a plate carrier and all that stuff. It's more to it. Now, I am part of the more static security guard uh, side of things, so the security industry. And so that's really what my main focus is, but I'm here to help all contractors out or anyone who wants to become a contractor. So before I get into the details, I want to talk about a little bit of my story, my experience. Um, so I was in the Marines, as you can see, I was in a combat MOS and before you get out of the military, you have to go through a course that kind of prepares you for the civilian world. So they teach you uh, how to make a resume, they teach you about different jobs and how the VA system works and your GI Bill, et cetera, et cetera. Well, when I was there, there was a corporate recruiter there who works for a military, uh, corporation, um, and I didn't get to meet him or shake his hand or anything, but he left his business card. And so I took that business card, I emailed him, and he requested my DD-214. And then he also said I have to be outside the military before I can talk to him and start the process. So I got out a couple months later, I shoot him another email with my DD-214 as well as my resume. And then he started the process and a few months later I was in Afghanistan in my first contract. All right? Now, for you guys, how to get into contracting, how to apply and all that. It's actually quite simple. It's really easy. You can first, you can go to their websites themselves, the company websites, and simply apply. All right? All you do is got to post your resume, your DD-214, and other things, and just wait a few days or maybe a week, and they'll respond. All right? Or you can go through my route, which is talk to a recruiter themselves directly, and they'll just simply re request like a resume and your DD-214 and stuff like that. That's the, probably the, the fastest and the best way to go. Um, there's a couple other ways you can do it, but those two I recommend. Um, you guys can go on um, Indeed.com or ShooterJobs.com. There's tons of contracts on there. Uh, now these contracts, these jobs, most of them are public. They're not secrets. Or you can go and look at the details of these contracts and where they're located and all that. Now there are a couple of contracts out there that are secret. There are a couple of contracts that you need to know someone in order to get in. But most are public and they're easy to apply for. All right. And now the second category that we're going to cover is the benefits, right? Why should you be a contractor? It's because of the benefits, all right? The first one is the pay. The pay is pretty good. Now, there are a couple of contracts out there where you make about 40000 a year um, because those are more for getting your foot in the door or those who don't have a secret clearance, um, those who don't really have much of a background. They're going to go have those jobs, all right? Now, there's a couple of, co a couple of those contracts are pretty cool. For example, I did a 40K uh, contract on Ascension Island, which is in the middle of nowhere in the Atlantic Ocean. And there's one over in, in Kosovo that's 40K a year, right? 
And if, on, your, on your time off, you can go around those different countries and visit Southeast uh, Europe. Now, the average pay for a contract job overseas is about 50K to 70K. Uh, my first contract in Afghanistan, I was making 70,000. It was probably a little bit less than that, but that, that's what they stated, it was $70,000. Um, and guess what? If you stay a whole year, it's tax-free. I, well, specifically, if you stay 335 days in a year, it becomes tax-free. So if you make $80,000 on a contract, you will get that full $80,000, right? But you do have to watch out because they'll say, oh, it's $80,000, but if you don't stay a whole year, you don't get the $5,000 bonus, which comes out at full $80,000. So you'd have to ask them and you know look at the specifics, the details, but you can make pretty good money, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Aircraft mechanics in Afghanistan were making $250,000 per year, tax-free. So if you did that for a few years, you would be a millionaire, literally. So I, there was a guy out there who did it for 10 years. 10 years. That kind of blows my mind. I don't know how you can be in Afghanistan for 10 years straight, but he was a multi-millionaire. And so you can be the same way, depending on your skill level and your experience, right? Uh, the second thing we can talk about is the, um, excuse me, uh, the travel, right? Uh, the travel is great. I've been to multiple different countries and for you guys, when you go on a contract, um, you will be traveling by plane, obviously, and the company will pay for it. So it's on the company dime. They're in back. So they'll pay for your flight there and you stay for however long you want, and then they'll pay for your flight back. Now, if your boss says, well, you're a bad employee, blah, 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 I'm not gonna pay for your flight. Well, they have to, because by international law, if they won't pay for your flight back and you're stuck in the country, it's considered human trafficking because that company brought you there, so they have to send you back, right? Now, if you commit a really bad crime, you'll get deported, obviously, but if you're not a good employee and you get fired for whatever reason, they have to pay for your flight back. So traveling is free. You save tons of money, literally thousands of dollars. Because say you go to Iraq or you go to Japan, it's like a $1,500 ticket. So you're saving quite a bit. Now part of, of traveling is you get to see different countries, different cultures, different foods, different historical sites. For example, I went to Israel and on my time off, on my days off, I went to different cities and towns. I went to Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, the Dead Sea. And I took several days off and I went to the country of Jordan to see Petra. Now Petra is a very famous and historical location. Very beautiful. I highly recommend. But I'm telling you, use this opportunity to travel and see the world, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to experience a lot. You're going to see a lot and you're going to enjoy it. Now the third benefit is the food. So what I mean is that some contracts, you'd be on a base and you get to go eat at the chow hall for free, which is essentially like a buffet. Um, some contracts will pay you extra called per diem in which you have to go to a grocery store, buy the food and then cook it yourself. I'm kind of lazy. I don't like to you know, cook really. Um, so it's kind of an annoying thing for me, but if you're good at cooking, you love cooking, then you should fit in real easy, all right? Uh, the next one is cheap health care, dental care, and eye care, right? So it's kind of how the military reserves work is that they'll give you private insurance and it's very cheap. So when I was in Afghanistan, it was about $45. I think nowadays it would be like about 50, 55 maybe. Then like 10 bucks for dental and like five or 10 for eye care. It's super cheap. And you can bring your family into the plans as well. They'll have to pay a little bit more because they're not working for the company directly. But you'll save quite a bit of money if you use their private insurance. Uh, in addition, um, the next one, kind of on you, and that's uh, networking, right? So that's one of the benefits with contracting is that you get to meet people all across the United States, all across the nation. They have different skills. They have different abilities, different knowledge. Um, and you get to meet a lot of cool people, but you have to be friendly, you have to talk, and you can learn quite a bit because these people, some, some of these people have worked in the contract business for several years. They know different companies, they know different contracts. 
Uh, you can learn about really good gigs that may pay 20, 30 K more than what you're doing right now. And also these people can hook you up back in the States, right? Cause these guys have civilian jobs. They know friends, all right? They know friends of friends, all right? So that's one good thing about being a military contractor is that you travel the world, you meet all types of people locally in foreign nations, as well as your fellow Americans, and you can you know, build up your network and benefit off of that, right? Um, some of these companies also provide tuition assistance. Not much, very little, probably cover one or two courses, maybe three. I never tried it. You're gonna to have to ask the person or the company that you applied for or ask your recruiter because they know everything. Um, but they'll help you out with tuition assistance. Um, a lot of times they'll approve it when you're trying to, uh, when they're trying to get you to benefit the company because they want you to take a course or two. Uh, but you can ask uh, if they can cover one or two courses. It's not 100%, they might, they might not but you just have to see. And there's many other benefits you get as a military contractor, but it would make the video too long. So we're gonna to go to our third category, which is important documents, right? You need these. Now I'm gonna say this very clearly. Copy all these documents, print them out, right? Make copies of those, put them on your phone and put them on your computer because you're gonna do a lot of scanning. You're gonna send them through the emails a lot and you're gonna take it overseas, all right? So keep your originals at home and take the copies with you overseas because you might need them. So the first important document is a resume. Make sure you create a resume before you apply, all right? Because they're gonna look at that. That's the first thing they look at, all right? And it's very easy to create a resume, thousands of examples online and on YouTube and stuff. It doesn't have to be super fancy. Mine's not fancy and I get hired everywhere I apply. So uh, just make sure you have details, you know, your military background, a security background, um, your certs and, you know, maybe your degree information on there. Uh, just make a resume before you apply, all right? Your second thing that you need is a passport. Very important if you get a passport. That's how you get overseas. You can go to like 90% of the countries overseas, especially with the U.S. Uh, passport. Now, those in the military, you've been given probably one of these kind of a reddish brown passport by the Department of State when you deploy overseas. They last about two years. These are useless. You can't use these. The companies, they don't want these. What they want is the blue tourist passport. These last 10 years. So get one of these. It takes about two months to get. Now you can say, hey, it's an emergency. I need a passport right now. They can probably get it out to you in two weeks, but you need proof that you're shipping off to another country but you need to get a blue passport a tourist passport this is how you get overseas they last 10 years right you're gonna have to scan and make copies of these as well um i think they cost between 130 to 175 dollars which is a hit on your part but it's well worth it because once again they last 10 years you can use this for a vacation as well as contracts overseas um, the third important document is your DD-214. Obviously, you need to be out of the military to get your DD-214. Make copy of, of those. Um, the next one you're going to need is a driver's license. Yes, a driver's license. Because the company be, could give you a rental car or a work car. And you're going to need to learn how to drive a shift. Because some of these uh, companies, they're, they're kind of cheap in certain areas. So buy a stick shift uh, vehicle, which is a little bit cheaper than an automatic and like for me, for example, I was on Ascension Island and I didn't really know how to drive a stick shift, but I learned really quickly and it was a little bit difficult at first, you know, I had to go up hills and little mountains up there, but I got used to it. I adapted, but you do need a driver's license, right? Some of these companies will ask you off the bat. And if you don't have one, they're not going to hire you. You'll be surprised. There's people in their twenties and thirties that don't have a driver's license. So make sure you get a driver's license, ladies and gentlemen. It's important. It's important like a passport in DD-214, okay? Um, and the next one is a degree. So if you have a degree like myself, I have a bachelor's, you would uh, stick that with your resume. Now, it doesn't guarantee that you'll get anything out of it. Um, I haven't got anything out of it just yet, but you could possibly get a promotion or more money 
or the recruiter will be like, hey, we have this other position for another contract that's $10,000 more than your current contract that you applied for. So you can get that hookup if you show them your degree, right? And the last thing is certificates, right? I never send any certificates with my resume. I put it on my resume, but not the certificates itself. Um, maybe if you're not sure if you're gonna get hired or not, you can put the certificates with your resume. Um, it can be like your firefighter, EMT search, school and infantry, different courses you took in the military, uh, first aid course, CLS, combat life saving skill search. They can help out in the recruiting and hiring process. They're not necessarily needed. You know, the recruiters never ask me for them. I never put them in. And so they're not necessarily needed, all right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I wish you guys have a great, amazing time contracting. If you decide to go contracting, um, our channel and this video is dedicated to helping you guys out. We want you guys to, to go contracting. We want you guys to explore the world and try different things. Uh, we're gonna make tons of new videos about the, the becoming a, a private military contractor, overseas contracts. We'll talk about some about the military. But as I said, we're here to help you guys. So please, please like this video, subscribe, comment down below because I like to answer every single comment, okay? Ask a lot of questions. Okay. Also down below, I'm going to put a bunch of links to these companies' websites that you can apply for. I'm going to put some videos and articles uh, so you can learn more about being a PMC as well as I'm going to summarize this whole video down there so you can see it in wording. But I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.